Good morning, LifeGate. How are you today? Would you stand with me as we open? In Psalms 92, verse 13, it says, Those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. So today we come here together to be planted and to flourish, to be light, to be hope to give life away to others. So as we come into this time of worship today, as we come into this time of setting ourselves aside to be watered, to be sown into, that we can flourish in our walk with him, we could be stronger. We're going to go out of here or, or as you hang up online and disconnect and go out and do your thing today, you're going to be able to give something away. That's my prayer is that you'll catch a glimpse of him today in a new light that you can give it away and others will be challenged and others will be blessed. Will you pray with me? Father, we thank you for this day that you have made. We thank you that you've given us a church building that we can come and be planted in it and we can leave flourishing in our spirit to go out and touch a world that is dying, touch a world that is thirsty, touch a world who is hungry for the things of God. Lord, that's our desire today as we come in corporately worship that we'll go away with something that we can share. Just like we would share a common meal with somebody, we would share your word. And the living word of God would bring life, hope, and restoration. We thank you for this in your name. Amen. This 
This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you. We praise you. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you. We praise you. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you, we praise you. We'll see you break down every wall. We'll watch the giants fall. Fear cannot survive when we praise you. The tide of breakthroughs on our side. Forever lift him high. With all creation cry, God, we praise you. We'll see you break down every Watch the giants fall. You cannot survive when we praise you. The God of breakthroughs on our side. Forever lift him high. With our creation cry, God, we praise you. Oh, we praise you. Praise you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. All throughout my history, your faithfulness has walked beside me. The winter storms made way for spring. In every season, from where I'm standing, I see the evidence of your goodness all over my life, all over my life. I see your promises in fulfillment all over my life, all over
Thank you, Lord. Lord, we just come before you. The song made a statement, why should I fear? Our motto of a four-square church is Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. So the God you were yesterday is enough for us today. And more than enough for us today. Because today we will get through. We can't look for tomorrow yet. We have to navigate today. And so, Lord, we come before you right now. Whatever heaviness is upon you, whatever concern, whatever weariness you have, just give it to him this morning. We have a whole book called the Bible. We thank you for that, Lord. We thank you for your word that gives us hope that the God of Moses and Elijah and David and Jonathan and Joseph and Mary is our God, of Paul and Peter is our God. And if you did it for them, how much more will you do for us? So, Lord, we stand on that today, and we give you praise and say thank you. Thank you. And I just ask, Lord, that right now you would just blow gently over our congregation and over our online audience. Lord, that you would bring a breeze of refreshing, a breeze of healing, a breeze of faith, that faith would arise, that faith would arise, and that the enemy would be destroyed. The enemy in our thoughts, the enemy in our physical bodies, the enemy who would just make us feel like we're an outsider and alone because we are not alone. We are not alone. You are in us. You're living us. You're vibrant within us. And we thank you for that today. And as we sing this song, Lord, if we will just take a time, the time, and acknowledge the evidence, the goodness that you've done in us and you're going to do as we believe with hope. Lord, help us to have eyes to see, ears to hear, and a mouth to proclaim, my God is alive, he is well, and he is working in my life. And we thank you for that in your name. Amen, 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 and amen. And you may be seated here in the audience, and this morning we are just so grateful for the goodness of the Lord. You know, we talked about the hurricane and the damage that it did. Um, I have a stepbrother that lived in Fort Myers, Florida. He lost everything. He got a hold of him this week. I didn't, but my other brother did. And all he has is what he had in his car. But he's alive. Material things can be replaced. But it was very devastating for him to go back and just see rubble. But God says, I will rebuild. Amen. Right? I will rebuild. And I'm praying for my brother Lance, and if you will play, pray for him as well, that he will just have an encounter with God during this very difficult time. And then others that have had a very difficult time with the hurricane. We have four square disaster relief on the ground there. We have people there that are helping. I know we've been concentrating on Ukraine, but now we're going to ask you to help concentrate on Hurricane Enon. So if you have extra to give above your tithes and offerings today, you can mark it on there, Ian, and we'll make sure that it gets to those people that are out there. 
that are the boots on the ground, so to speak, helping to rebuild, helping with materials, bringing in, driving in trucks, cleaning up debris. You know, we have a great organization that does that, a whole department in our denomination that helps us with that. So that, that's, we're looking forward to what we're going to hear of how God provided in the midst of what would seem to be a tragedy. Amen? Amen. Also this morning, there was a sign-up sheet outside when you came in for Fall Fest. If you did not sign up, sign up on your way out. We need to have probably at least 50 people to pull this off, if not more. And we're excited because it's just right around the corner. It's five weeks away. And we're going to reach our community with love and resources and food. If you feed them, they will come. Right? And it's all free. But we also need people to help set up, tear down, serve food, work in booths, direct traffic, because our parking lot will not be available. And we're going to have our whole parking lot set up. We have T-shirts back here. If you want to buy a new T-shirt to wear that day, you can wear any LifeGate shirt you want. But we have T-shirts back here, $10 for adults, $5 for kids. You may see Carly afterwards. Pick up one of those. Today is communion for those online. If you want to prepare some elements that you can use, um, please do so as we'll be doing communion during our service today. You know, God is so good. He's so faithful. This morning, we need to pray for Florence and Earl. Um, Earl's mother went to be with Jesus on Friday. But she's in a better place. She's not suffering anymore. She knows him. So she's up there dancing around with all the other saints. But for the family that are grieving, we pray for them. And that God will meet their needs, will help them in the next phases of preparing for that service. We have a great testimony of Jeremy, Richard's son. I was not able to attend, but pastor and the family all got to go to his graduation. He is now an L.A. City, an L.A. City firefighter. He passed the course. So when you see Jeremy, give him a high five. It was an amazing ceremony I watched online. And I know you're proud of your son. It was a hard 14 weeks, and now he's going to be out there at a firehouse. Who knows? He may be in your neighborhood. And you can say, I know that boy, that young man. <laughs> and uh, Richard and Marilyn have raised some great children. And, of course, Elliot and Isabel are the auntie and the uncle and cousin, Amaris. And I know you guys are all proud of him. And so when you see him, give him a high five and say, we're so proud of you. And so that, that's a great announcement that when we start something and we finish well. So as the ushers come forward this morning, we're going to receive your morning tithes and offerings. And, you know, Pastor hit this really hard last week. And thank you for your love offering for Greg. It was amazing. Those of you that ordered books, they'll be here this week. Um, the coloring books will be here and some of the other materials as he's already mailed them out to us. But I just love... I can't say enough. I just love how my God takes care of me when I'm faithful to him. And I love how he takes care of you when you're faithful to him. And it's not just with your tithes and offerings. It's also with your service unto him. And so we have great needs in the church, and I know we're taking offering right now, but we have some really great needs in our church. We need ushers. We need tech people. We need nursery workers. We need children's workers. We need youth workers. And we need more musicians. Our team is stretched. But I know my God will provide. Amen? Will your God provide? Will your God provide? Amen. He will provide. So with those areas of need today, some of you are sitting here and you go, yeah, I could do that once a month or every two months. I'd be willing to do that. As you give today, say, Lord, I'm not only giving them my resources that you've blessed me with, but this is my prayer today, Lord. I'm giving them my time and my talent as well. Prick my spirit. Show me what area I can best be used for your kingdom's growth, your kingdom's expansion, your kingdom's opportunities that are out there. Lord, I thank you for our church. I thank you for their faithfulness. I thank you for their willingness. And Lord, we're believing that you're going to bring in 
the workers that we need to serve the community that you're sending to us. We give you praise for that in your name. And everybody said? Amen. 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 And again, for those of you that are watching online this morning, you can prepare those elements for communion. Whatever you have, it's, it's the, the emblem of what you're doing as we take communion. Also, if you have a prayer request, you can send that in today. We're continuing to pray for Lauren Gomez, Sherry McClear, and others that are going through very difficult times in their body right now. Jason still needs healing in his foot. We're believing that what God started a couple of weeks ago in some of your backs, some of your body elements, he's going to do it. It doesn't always happen overnight. So as we contend and we're faithful, God will meet us there. Amen. Will you stand with me? And we're going to sing together, see a victory. Amen. Declare that today for you and your family. Sexually rest on us. Oh, sorry. Sorry. As the Spirit was moving over the water, Spirit come move over us. Come rest on us. Rest on us as the Spirit was moving over the water. Spirit, come move over us. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. Come down. Spirit, when you move, you make my heart. When you feel the room, you're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will feel me. Spirit, when you move, you make my heart. When you feel the room, you're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will feel me. Yeah. Praise you, Jesus. That spirit was moving over the water. Spirit, come move. on us, come rest on us, as the Spirit was moving over the water, Spirit come move over us, come rest on us, come rest on us, fire and wind come and do it again, open up the gates, heaven on in, come rest on us. Come rest on us, fire and wind, come and do it again. Open up the gates, let heaven on in. Come rest on us, come rest on us, come down. Spirit, when you move, you make my heart bound. When you feel the room, you're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you. Holy Spirit, come towards us.
you through the roof. You're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will feel me come down. Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pound. When you feel the room, you're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will feel me come down. Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pound. When you feel the room, Lift your hands to the Lord and just and say that again, Lord. You're all we want. You're all we want. Holy Spirit. Come on, you want to become. Come upon this house. Come upon your life. Do this work of grace in you. Let him do it this morning. You're all we want. Yeah. Oh, come, Lord. Oh. So Jesus, do it this morning, we pray. Holy Spirit, come rest on us. You're all we want. You're all we want. Holy Spirit, come rest on us. You're all we want. Just your voices, here we go. Holy Spirit, come rest on us. You're all we want. You're all we want. Holy Spirit, come rest on us. You're all we want. You're all we want. Hallelujah. Just lift your voice to the Lord and praise Him. Hallelujah. Lord, we just want you to continually work in and through our lives, God. We realize our need for you. We realize how much you love us. We realize how much you care for us. And God, we set ourselves apart unto you today, fresh and anew, saying, God, we want more, we want more, we want more of you. We don't want to be the same. We don't want to be even like we were 30 seconds ago. Lord, we want to be changed from glory to glory, looking more and more like you, oh Lord. Pour out your spirit upon us, we pray, Lord. That's what you came to do. You, you sent your spirit to dwell, upon, dwell among us and dwell within us. And as that happens, Lord, we are changed to look more and more 
to act more and more like you, to speak more and more like you, to think more and more like you. So change our hearts, our minds, our motives, our actions, and may we always consider your ways and put your ways in the highest priority of our life. Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're all we want. You're all we want. You're all we want, Lord. You're all we want. Oh, Jesus, pour out your spirit upon this place. Just like you did in the upper room, Lord God. Pour out upon us each and every day, I pray. Fill us with your spirit over and over and over again, Lord. Jesus, 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 work in and amongst us. God, you're all we want, Lord. You're all we want. Holy Spirit, come rest on us. You're all I want. You're all we want. Jesus. Jesus. Thank you for your goodness today, Lord. Thank you that we come with a spirit of attitude of of praise and worship and adoration to you. We come with a heart to learn. And to learn, we, we want to then be able to give away what we've learned. We want to learn so that we can serve and that we can serve others and give away what you've called us to. Tell people about you. Share your love with others. That they may come to know who you are. Jesus, you're the bright one. You're the glorious one. And yet you've told us that we are to be salt and light. That we are the salt of the earth. We are the light of the world. Jesus. That's who you've called us to be. That's who you've said we are. May we take that, own it, live it out. In Jesus' name. In the power of your spirit having your anointing upon your people, let us go forth in that power with your love, your grace to the world. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Well, greet somebody around you this morning. Take a moment to say hi to somebody. If you're uh, online this morning, make a quick comment. Say hi to somebody online, okay? Do that today. Ooh, God is good, amen? Yeah. Yeah. You know, today I couldn't ask for anything better. If we were to end service right now, and we were to go, and we were go to go out of this place with an attitude and a heart to say, Lord, you're all I want. And we would do that constantly, and we would declare that, and we would live that out, I tell you what, it would set the world on fire. We really would. Because if we want all that God has for us, then there's going to be nothing stopping us, holding us back from sharing the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ and seeing people come into his kingdom. You're all we want, Lord. Let it be, Lord Jesus. Let that become a reality for all of us, I pray. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, we spoke two weeks ago, a classic case of courage, and that was part one, and then Greg Johnson called me and... Uh, interrupted that. But that was a great interruption, right? See, there are divine interruptions. And you know, we can always have divine interruptions. 
And we shouldn't think of the, of the you could probably pull down the, the, um, the FX just a little bit on the master over there. You'll see it on the right-hand side. Just a little bit to kind of calm down the reverb that's coming through here. So on the right-hand side, you'll see where it says FX. Just on the right-hand side, on your right. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, just turn that down just a hair. We'll be good. All right. Sorry about that. See, that was an interruption. Um, but you know what? When we have uh, uh, these, these divine interruptions, we ought to receive them. Because when we do, God, God is wanting to do something, and sometimes he just comes into the midst of our regular routine and interrupts it for a reason so that we can do what God wants us to do, we can hear what God has to say, and we can move forward in our lives in the way that God wants us to. And so sometimes we need to have some divine interruptions in our life and not be surprised by them, but be welcoming of them. And that's, uh, that's what we want. So when God speaks to you somewhere, you say, well, this is a strange time for God to be saying something to me, and does he really want me to do that? Guess what? Well, you know what? I don't want to interrupt those people. Guess what? They're waiting for a divine interruption too. They just don't know it. And we can be a divine interruption in somebody's life that can change, change uh, eternity for them. So uh, let's not uh, worry about divine interruptions, but we are going to go back to what we were talking about, a classic case of courage. Um, so this is going to be the second part of it. God wants us to have this new, fresh courage in our life, and, and uh, he's given it to us before. We want to stay with it, and we want to allow God to continually uh, do what he's called us to do. And so we were, uh, we were in this uh, section, and we had four points, and we were going to get to them all. We got through two of them. We've got two more to cover, and that's where I'm going to take you today. What was impressed upon my heart is just one thing, and you already know this, but you are the people of God. You are children of the Most High God. Not just you, but everyone who speaks forth the name of Jesus, professes the name of Jesus, proclaims his name. As I just said a moment ago, that you are the salt of the earth and you are the light of the world. I didn't say that. We didn't make that up. Jesus spoke that to his disciples and all who honor him. That's what he said we are. And so what happens when we are salt? As my wife's been speaking on Monday nights, and I haven't listened in too much, although I have heard a little bit because she's been getting a little preachy on that line on Monday nights. And so she's been going crazy, and you people, or Tuesday nights, excuse me, and you people ought to join in. All you ladies ought to join in for that. It's a powerful powerful series that she's doing, and, uh, and so just uh, take that, and if you uh, don't know how to join in, just call the office, call somebody in the church, and we'll make sure you get on there, text us or whatever you want to do, we'll make sure that, that you get on, and, uh, and so, you know, we can live out being the salt and light. I love spicy food. But not only spicy, I like hot food. A little, is it, is it habanero or habanera? A or O? O, right? Habanero. And I love that stuff. Rodrigo in our, in our church, in our Spanish ministry, he makes the best. It is absolutely wonderful, and, but it is hot. But it's so good. And not just because it's hot. It just has a great flavor to it, but it's hot. With flavor. So there's a seasoning to it. And, and these chilies and whatever, but whatever else he does to it is just wonderful. I like that stuff. You're the light of the world. Well, it lights me up a little bit, but anyway, it's a, it's a powerful stuff. But, you know, seasoning is great. I don't know about anybody really that just likes bland food. I don't know. Now, I know some people, I mean, the Greeks coming from, from my background or whatever, my relatives and things in Greece, when I go there and visit them and the people there, you know, they cook the food and then they let it cool down. If it comes out of the freezer or the refrigerator, they put it and let it warm up. They, <laughs> they like everything at a moderate temperature. They say that's what's good for your heart. You shouldn't eat real hot things. You shouldn't eat real cold things. That's what's good for your heart. 
I made a lady sick one day because we, we had a little party with some people and so forth, and they had, they had put some water, a pitcher of water in the, in the um, freezer to get it cold because they hadn't chilled it. And they were just going to chill it just a little bit. Well, she forgot it in there. I said, can I have some of that? So they poured me a glass, and I took this because you can't hardly even find ice in Greece, at least didn't used to be able to. And uh, you can today, but you couldn't then. And they wouldn't give you much ice even if they had it. And so they, uh, you know, they'll put like three little cubes in your Coke or whatever, you know, three little tiny little cubes. And that's like, okay, um, that's a start, <laughs> maybe. And so I took, they poured me a glass of stuff and I took it and I just drank it down. The lady watched me do that, the lady of the house. She watched me do that. She literally got sick to her stomach went in the, had to go in the bedroom and recover for a while before she could come back out watching me do that. She thought that was just a horrible thing, but it just really affected her. I'm like, wow. Man, shouldn't we have that great effect upon people? I don't mean to make people sick, but I mean that, that what we do would affect somebody in a way that it would change their lifestyle, change the way that they saw things, their perspective on things, and it would literally turn their life around Maybe get them deep on the inside. And I don't mean to make somebody sick. That's not the purpose. But it just makes a, a, a point that, you know what? If we're going to be really salt and light, then, then uh, we should be able to affect somebody's life some way. Not by eating spicy food or by drinking ice cold water, but by giving forth the life of Jesus. You know, we can live this out, right? We can live it out. God said it, and we can believe it. So we've been talking about courage, and the first point of courage a couple weeks ago was to stand, to stand strong against evil. Courage to stand strong against evil. We have all kinds of things that come against us, and God has courage available for us to overcome anything that hell would throw at us, anything the devil wants to do and try to trap us or hurt us in any way, shape, or form. We have the power over that. We were talking in Joshua chapter 1. Verses 1 through 9, actually, and then we also, I think, read verse 11. But we were talking about Joshua because it's all about a journey, and all of us are on a journey. And this was a journey taken by God's people. The people who have, uh, were, were uh, in, ex in, in the book of Exodus, we find, well, they were in Egypt, and they were slaves in Egypt, and God had called Moses to go in and set them free, and as they find their freedom, they walk through the, the, the wilderness for 40 years. They were only supposed to be a few days, but they end up being there 40 years because of disobedience. All of a sudden, Moses then passes away because God said, Moses, that's the end of your trip. Now it's time for Joshua to lead the people across the Jordan and into the promised land. So he begins to do that. So it's a journey taken by God's people to find their promise. God always wants to take us on a, on a trip to find the promise that he has for us. To take us to places where he, that he has for us. If my mom and dad hadn't taken a trip, I may never have found Debbie as my wife. Because they ended up going on the same trip. I didn't get to go. I stayed back and worked like a good boy. And... Debbie was on the trip. They found Debbie. With Debbie, they talked, whatever. Debbie came over one night. We, they showed pictures to each other, whatever. Had a good time. Hey, that's the way it is. I got to know Debbie a little bit. And we started talking about some youth ministry. We started a youth thing, and, and we got other people involved. And Barbie was one of them who's in our church. And Barbara, excuse me to all of you who know her as Barbara. And, uh, but, uh, uh, you know, she's... She, that's what happened. It was a journey. A trip caused the promise to come. And I found my promised wife. Isn't that wonderful? It took a trip to do that. It takes us a trip with Jesus to find out all that he has for us. It doesn't just show up like that. We have to walk the pathway. We have to continually walk with him. In Joshua chapter 1, verses 1 through 9, just to uh, renew what we were talking about, it says, after the death of Moses, the Lord's servant, the Lord spoke to Joshua, son of Nun, N-U-N, Moses' assistant. 
He said, Moses, my servant is dead. Therefore, the time has come for you to lead these people, the Israelites, across the Jordan River into the land I am giving them. I promise you what I promised Moses. Isn't that powerful? I promise you what I promised Moses. Moses was the man of God. Moses was the person who led the children of Israel out of, out of Egypt. He was the one who, who God had him do the miracles uh, to, to get Pharaoh to release them. It was the promise. He says, wherever you set your foot, you will be on land I have given you. From the Negev wilderness in the south to the Lebanon mountains in the north, from the Euphrates River in the east to the Mediterranean Sea in the west, including all the land of the Hittites. No one will be able to stand against you as long as you live, for I will be with you as I was with Moses. I will not fail you or abandon you. God, you will not fail me or abandon me. Sometimes we get all mixed up in this world, the way, way things go on, and we think, God, where are you? But remember God's promise, I will not fail you or abandon you. If he did it for Moses, he did it for Joshua, we see him do it for Paul. We see what he has said to us over and over throughout the scriptures, I will never leave you nor forsake you. He speaks to us all and says, I will not leave you. I will not fail you. I will not abandon you. God is God and, and he loves his people. He's our Father. He's going to do everything for us. He will be with us. Verse 6 says, Be strong and courageous, for you are the one who will lead these people to possess all the land I swore to their ancestors I would give them. See, Moses and Joshua were two leaders, but he was giving the land to who? All the people. All the people. Be strong and very courageous. He says it again. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the instructions Moses gave you. Do not deviate from them. Wow. In this day and age, in this culture, and he's telling us do not deviate. He's telling them do not deviate from the things of God. Do not deviate. Do not turn aside. Do not look another direction. How easy is it for us to look in other directions, to see different things? We hear a little thing here, a little thing there, and all of a sudden, oh, well, maybe that's right, maybe that's right. Go back to the Word of God, see what God says. See what the Word of God says. Because we've got to stand strong in the Word of God. We can't let anything else take, uh, take its place. We can't let somebody else speak something that isn't out of the word of God and take it as truth. We've got to understand, and we can. He says, be strong and very courageous and be careful to obey all the instructions Moses gave you. What were the instructions Moses gave? The five books of the law. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. That's what he left for them. When they read the scriptures, that's what they were reading. Do not deviate from them, turning either to the right or to the left. Then you, then you will be su successful. Here's the result. Just like we read in Psalm 1, you've heard me quote that over and over and over again. Right? Because the result is prosperity. The result is su being successful in everything you do, as it says here. So study the, this book of instruction continually. Meditate on it day and night, which is what it says in Psalm 1. So you'll be sure to obey everything written in it. We can't obey it if we don't know what it says. And we got to read it and read it and reread it. As Greg Johnson says in, R, in J12, it's R and R. Read and rewrite. Read it. Write it in your own words so it gets down in your spirit. Read it, write it in your own words. It's journaling. It's doing soap. Scripture, observation, application, and prayer. Here's the scripture, observations. Here's what it says. Boom, application. Here's what it means. To, it means. Here's what it means to me. You can take it further. Here's what it means to the church. Here's what it means to my family. Here's what it means to our culture today. Here's what it means. 
And it says, only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do. It says it again. There's only one way to prosperity, and that is to follow the ways of the Lord, to follow the teachings of God, to follow his word, to meditate on it day and night. There's only one way. We say, well, it's not important. I can get around it. Oh, I listen to so-and-so. I hear somebody talk. He says, you read it. You read it yourself. You understand it yourself. The Holy Spirit is there. We just, we just confess those things that the Holy Spirit is there for us. Come, Holy Spirit, rest on us. Empower us with everything you have, your wisdom, your understanding that we may know the very heart of God. Because the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Christ. And, he want, and, and, and Jesus is the one who wrote the Word. It's His Word, right? In John 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God and the Word was God. Verse 9 says, this is my command, be strong and courageous. He says it again. Do not be afraid or discouraged. In other words, have courage. Don't be discouraged, have courage. This is my command, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Last, a couple of weeks ago, we shared with you what courage was. I shared with you that Webster said it's mental or moral strength to venture, persevere, and withstand danger, fear, or difficulty. I also shared this with you. Courage is the ability to act on what we know is right and good, to dare to do what we should or must. Talked about how fear paralyzes us, and courage is what helps us move ahead and sets us free. So the courage doesn't eliminate fear, but it makes fear ineffective. Write that down if you didn't get a chance to a couple weeks ago. It makes fear ineffective. Of course, you can always go back, you know, to watch it on YouTube or on Facebook, on our Facebook page. Courage brought Joshua confidence that he would succeed. And that's what God wants to give to us every day, confidence to know that we will succeed, that we will prosper in everything. I tell you, it hasn't been easy. It's not always easy to have that kind of confidence. I'll share with you at another time what God was dealing with me. I was going to just share it. And I think, well, I'll just, I'll just wait. I'll just hold that for a moment. But life's been hard. Church has been hard. But God is faithful. And if God's done it before, he'll do it again. And if God wants us to move forward in our families, he'll help us. What we have to do is be courageous and not fear, but go in faith and stand in him and what he said in his promises because his promises are true. God promises to help us in time of need and that he is the source of our strength and courage and all of that should bring about in us boldness to face whatever situation that's before us. God will do it. We have the power to stand. Young people, you have the power to stand because you have the power of God working for you. To stand against all the evil around you, to stand against all the, the, the people that are speaking such drastic things and horrible things. People that say things that are against God's word, you know what? You can stand out in your, in your culture. You can stand out in your school. It's okay to stand out and be ridiculed and blasphemed and everything else because you know what? You have God on your side. Don't worry about it. God's got you. Say it hurts. Yeah, it hurts. It hurts. It's painful. It's just so much easier to go along with the crowd and just kind of blend in because then everybody accepts me and so forth. Don't worry about being accepted by you. We're just, just make sure that you are accepted by God. And how you're going to be accepted by God is to stand according to his word. 
See that? Yeah, it's okay to be different. Thank you. That's a good word. That's a saying, as Greg would say last week, right? That's a saying. It's okay to be different. Yeah. It's okay to be different. That works out in ways and say-sos. Sayings, ways, and say-sos. Yeah. Who knows? Maybe Greg is watching this morning. How about that, Greg? Got a saying. It's okay to be different. As long as you're different the way that God wants you to be different. As long as you're standing in God's word. We don't have to be different by putting on some sort of false identity. God made us who you are. God made you who you are. Be the person of God. Be the, be the man or woman of God he created you to be. And guess what? You'll thrive. When you listen to culture and you get all tricked up because of all these things and, and you listen to other people trying to, you know, pull you aside and say, well, do this and do that or be like this or be like that. You know what? That stuff's from hell. We need people to make sure that they're following the things of God. And they'll confess Jesus and confess who God is and all the things about what God wants to do in and through their lives and what he has done in their lives and who he was made to be so that they can walk in freedom and joy and fellowship with, with the Lord and with God's people. Man, it's so important. And let's not us placate the world. Well, it's okay, it's okay. And they continue to walk in this struggle where they are getting more and more bound up rather than being set free. We want people to be set free. Ephesians chapter 6, I read it a couple weeks ago, but it says a final word. Be strong in the Lord and then power of his might. Put on all of God's armor so that you'll be able to stand firm against all strategies of the devil. And some of the things going on that we hear about, read about, whatever, putting things in the minds of people, these are strategies of the devil to divide and not bring things together, not bring people to the the blessing of God, but to rip them apart from God. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in the dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Therefore, put on every piece of God's armor so you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then after the battle, you will still be standing firm. Stand your ground, putting on the belt of truth. And the body armor of God's righteousness. For shoes, put on the peace that comes from the good news so that you will be fully prepared. In addition to all these, hold up the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows of the devil. Put on salvation as your helmet and take the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the Spirit at all times and on every occasion. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. Pray for ourselves, pray for others. Because the enemy is wanting to destroy, but God wants to build you, build up his people. He wants to make them prosperous, and he wants more and more people to come to him and be ripped out of the hands of the enemy and walk in his presence, live in his presence. It takes courage to stand against evil. But as we just sang a moment ago, the Holy Spirit, come rest on us, Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit will empower you with strength to stand. The second thing we talked about is courage to remain strong in our faith. And we talked about what would happen if Joshua lacked courage and faith. The people would have been stuck on the other side of the Jordan. Never would have reached the promised land. But Joshua believed. In verse 11 of that chapter, it says, He he told them to run through the camp and tell everybody, get ready. 
We used to sing an old song, be bold, be strong, for the Lord thy God is with thee. Be bold, be strong, for the Lord thy God is with thee. Do not be afraid, do not be dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee. You better run through the camp telling everybody get ready, get ready. You better run through the camp, tell everybody, get ready, get ready. Are you ready to take this land? Are you ready to take a stand? Are you ready to take this land for the Lord? Be bold. Be strong. It says it in the Word over and over again, for the Lord your God is with you. We don't have to worry about all this stuff. If we stand strong with the Lord, we don't have to worry about succumbing to all the evil around us because God has given us victory over it if we stand strong in him and if we stand strong in his word. God has given us favor. He's given us the city. And he will triumph as we take our lead from him. We will triumph. And we are to encourage one another with these words. We are to encourage one another with the actions we take. The third thing is courage to resist temptation. Courage to resist temptation. I know it's out there. And anybody who says, you know, well, there's nothing out there, whatever. We're being tested all the time. Everything's going on around us. Men are being tested all the time. Sex is put out there. We don't talk about that much, but sex is being put out there all the time, just throwing itself in our faces. Wherever we go, billboards, internet, quick advertisements, whatever it is. And it's just thrown out there. But don't tell me we don't have to stand and resist. Oh, we got this. No, if we do that, we're going to fall. We got to stand and stand strong. Women, you need to pray for these men. And men, you need to pray for ladies. Because it works both directions. But men really get hit hard with it. It is so interesting in this world that men are criticized so much for this, but the world and women are making it so blatant and and acceptable and say, this is the way it is. And just laying themselves out there all the time. It is there. But men of God be men of God. Stand strong because you can. The Lord your God is with you. James 4, 7 says this, Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Many times we just take the the back part of that verse that says resist the devil and he will flee from you. Okay, well, how do I resist? How you resist is submit to God. Submit to God. And when we do that, we then gain strength to flee the enemy and resist the devil. It says, it continues on, it says, draw near to God. How are you going to draw near to God? Pray, read his word, stay close with brothers and sisters, talk about the Lord. Day and night, as it says. Richard leads us in the song, day and night, night and day, let incense arise. Worshiping the Lord constantly. Our life is to be worshiped to the Lord. And if we stay in that attitude day and night, night and day, guess what? That's how we stand strong against all these adversities and all these uh, tricks of the enemy that come against us. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners. And purify your hearts, you double-minded. This is James talking to the church. He was leading the church. That we can't just rest on our laurels, say, oh, we gave our life to Jesus back in, you know, 1966. February 6, 1966. That was my date. I can't just go back to that and say, you know what, that's when I gave my life to the Lord and I'm just fine ever since. If I don't stay in God's word and stay with God's people and trust in the Lord and put him as number one priority in my life, you know what? We can all fall. I can fall. But 
that's something we have to do every day. Submit to God. Resist the devil. He'll flee from you. Draw near to God. Cleanse your hands. Make confession. When you sin, confess it and repent. Turn around. Walk a new direction. You can do that. You don't have to be the same person you are to you, you are to, uh, same person tomorrow that you have been yesterday or the day before or whenever it was that you weren't serving God. You don't have to continue to be that person. You say, well, I haven't been this person where I'm really committed to God and reading his word and doing all that. Well, then change today and be different today, this afternoon, and then tomorrow, and the next day after that. Lament and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Why is that saying that? Because of the repentance that we are to have. As it says then in verse 10, humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord. And guess what? He's going to come along and he's going to lift us up. We've got to lay ourselves out before him and say, God, I'm sorry. I want to get things right in my life. How do you act or react when someone at work is dishonestly trying to get ahead of you? By putting you down. That happens, right? The way we get ahead of others is by putting others down. See, then we feel better about ourselves. If we can put somebody else down, it makes us feel like we've been lifted up. But that's not the way it works. The Bible tells us to love one another. The Bible says prefer others about ourselves. Above ourselves. Prefer others above ourselves. Put others first. You say, well, how am I going to get ahead if I put others first? God will lift you up. God will, ra- will, will cause the cream to rise to the top. Because it's done out of love. It's done out of care. It's done out of sacrifice. It's done out of giving. And when we give ourselves like that, you know what? Something is going to happen and God is going to take care of us. We don't have to put somebody else down and put them aside or make somebody else look bad so we can rise up. That's false pretense. Love others. And God's going to come along and he's going to show his goodness to you. And he's going to walk you through to victory. He's going to give you what you need. He's going to cause you to prosper. Hebrews 2, 14 through 18 says, Because God's children are human beings made of flesh and blood, the Son, meaning Jesus Christ, also became flesh and blood. For only as a human being could he die, and only by dying could he break the power of the devil who had the power of death. Only in this way could he set us free, all, uh, he could set free all who have lived their lives as slaves to the fear of dying. We also know that the son did not come to help angels. He came to help the descendants of Abraham. That's you and me as well. Therefore, it was necessary for him to be made in every respect like us, his brothers and sisters, so that he could be our merciful and and faithful high priest before God. Then he could offer a sacrifice that would take away the sins of the people. Since he himself has gone through suffering and testing, he is able to help us when we are being tested. There you go. How do you get through all this testing? How do you resist temptation? How do you have courage to do that? He will help us. If we put our faith and our trust in him, we allow him to change our hearts and our mind and to be more and more like him. Leads us to number four, and four is courage. Courage to do the right thing. Courage to do the right thing. Remember the story of Jesus and all the things he went through going to the cross? All the things that happened to him as as people were, were saying wrong things about him. They were trying to say that he blasphemed and this happened and that happened and they finally turned him over to Pilate. And Pilate couldn't find anything wrong with him. But Pilate lacked courage to do the right thing. And it says in Luke 23, verse 23 and 24, I'm not going to read the whole verse, but it says, and their voices prevailed. As people were saying, crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. It says, and their voices prevailed. So Pilate sentenced Jesus to die as they demanded. He listened to them. 
culture says, this is okay, this is okay, this is okay. We'll legalize this, we'll legalize that. It's okay to be whatever you want to be. Live however you want to live. No, that's not right. But the world says that. The old singer says, I got to be me. I got to be me. Well, well, you can be you if you walk after God who said that you're made in his image and you walk after the things of God and be the person that God has made you to be because you are who God said you are. And God wants you to live in his ways according to his standards so you can prosper. And it is about prospering financially. It's being part of his kingdom. It's being his children. Standing up for what is right can get you in trouble with corrupt people. Standing up for what is right can get you in trouble with people who are dishonest and all of that. Standing up for what is right can bring hurt to you. But failing to stand up for what is right can get you in trouble with God. It can get you in trouble with corrupt people, but failing to live up to what is right can get you in trouble with God. That I don't want. I want to be with God. I want to understand the things that God says and why he says them and understand the benefit that that is not only to me, but to others. See, Joshua listened to the voice of God. He believed what God said was not only possible, but he believed it was absolute. And we live in a world that doesn't really believe too much in absolutes. But he believed God. His only task was to follow God's lead. Be obedient to the word and move the people forward. There was a man that moved from England to the United States. Soon he dropped out of sight. His uncle in England had died and, and uh, left this man five million. Scotland Yard look looking for, uh, went looking for him. His last address that they knew of was in Chicago, but they didn't have any luck finding him. They, couldn't, they could not find the individual. Later, long time later, he was found in the entryway of a cheap motel. He could not afford the 25 cents to get a room, although he was heir to $5 million. Reason being, he did not Lay hold of what belonged to him. So let's make it a saying. Lay hold of what belongs to you. Lay hold of what belongs to you. Do you realize that, that God gave Israel 300,000 square miles? 300,000 square miles. That's a lot. 300,000 square miles, that's a lot. The most they ever claimed was 30,000. One-tenth. The most they ever claimed in their history. And today what they have is 8,600 square miles. They were promised 300,000 square miles, but they only took, they only have, and only walk in possession, live in possession of 8,600, nearly 8,600, just short of that. Wow. Can you imagine? And yet we see Israel doing very well in some respects, but they've never got the land that they were promised because they didn't take it or hold on to it go after what God had given to them. They continued to make compromises, you read in God's word, right? 
They continue to make compromises with this nation, that nation. He said, go in and destroy this. Go in and destroy that. Take this. Well, yeah, but we didn't want to do this, and we didn't want to do that. We took the plunder over here. God said, destroy everything at times. Sometimes he gave them the plunder. Sometimes he said, you can take that. But as they would listen to God's word, they could receive. But if they, can, if they didn't, and guess what? God didn't punish them. They punished themselves. What are we doing to ourselves? Are we punishing ourselves? If we're not living up to God's word and doing what God says, then yes, we're punishing ourselves. The consequences of sin is drastic. How much, so here's the question for you as we close. How much are we missing out on of what God has promised to us in our personal families, as a household of believers, as an individual, as a church? How much are we missing out on of what God has promised to us? Of what God has promised to you? I think we could all just simply say, yeah, I want to receive all God has promised, but are we willing to stand. Are we willing to stay in the word? Are we willing to preach the gospel? Are we willing to be the salt and light? Are we willing to do that? And will we do that? Because we don't have to just be willing. We, have to, we can do it. God said we have that power to do that. Will we do that? I will receive all God has promised to me. I want to receive all God has promised to me. Therefore, I will follow God's word, walk in his ways, speak the truth, walk in obedience. I will do that. It takes courage for us to abound. It takes courage for us to exceed. It takes courage for us to prosper in the things our Lord has for us. Will we? Will we do that? Will we stand courageously in all of these things and take the truth of what God's Word says, that we may be the people of God and receive of His promise? For you, parents, live it out so that you can help your families walk in those ways. If your kids are older already, teach your children and continue to coach them along the way as they're growing up and as they're young women and young men and you young men and young women as you're starting to have families and all of that. Teach your children well. I know that was a quote from Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young and there's in a song they used to sing years and years ago when I was a kid. But the truth is there. Teach your children to walk in the righteous ways of the Lord. Teach your children God's words as it says in Deuteronomy chapter 6 verses 4 through 7. Teach your children the things of God because it is through that that they are going to prosper as they then hold on to that word and begin to live out that word, and God has abundance for them. We want God's abundance. We want God's healing. We want God's grace. He provided all for us on the cross at Calvary. He provided for us by, by allowing his body to be, to be torn apart for us that we might be healed. He allowed for us to enter into his very presence because of his shed blood having been redeemed by the blood of the lamb. And now we can walk in wholeness and we can walk in peace and we can walk in comfort and we can stand in that courage because of what Jesus did for us and then sending us his spirit to dwell with us and in us so that we can live our lives in the very presence of God wherever we go at whatever time at all times. You bow your heads with me.
going to make a statement. And I'm going to ask you to respond to it. You can lift your hand. You can stand up where you are. In reference to all that we've been talking about, just simply this word, and you know what it means to you. I will do what it takes to walk in the blessings of God. I will do what it takes. There may be some changes that need to happen in some of you. I will do what it takes. I'm making a new declaration today. I will do what it takes. How many of you just lift your hand or stand where you are and say, you know what, I'm, I'm going to do what it takes. There's some changes that need to happen to me, but I'm going to do what it takes. Yeah, I see a hand, brother. Yeah, sister, sister, brother, yeah. I'll do what it takes. Anybody else? Go ahead, make that declaration. Yeah, I'll do what it takes to walk. Yes, yeah. See, these are believers that are lifting their hands. Yes, yeah, yeah, yes, amen. Amen, I see that. Yes. Yeah, good, good. Yeah. Praise God. I will do what it takes. Is there anybody here this morning who says, you know what, I've never received Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. I'm hearing a little bit about what it takes, but I've never confessed Jesus Christ as my Lord and my Savior. But today, I want to make Jesus Christ my Lord and Savior. I want to make him king of my life I want him to lead me. I want his Holy Spirit to come and dwell within me. And that can happen as you would just surrender your life to Jesus and say, Lord Jesus, come into my life. Cleanse me of all my sin. Make me new. I want to live with you. I want to live in your presence. I want to be with you. I want to be one of your dear children. So Lord, do that in me today. How many, how many of you would just lift your hand and say, I'm saying that today. I want to become a child of God. I want to give my life to Jesus. If you've never done that before, Maybe you've never asked Jesus Christ to come into your heart and life. Is there anybody here who just says, today, I want to confess Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Make him my king, the one that I will follow. Anybody, just lift your hand up. Just lift your hand up right now if that's you. Yeah? Yeah? That you? Guess what? You're my brother. You just became my brother because we're children of God. Amen. Anybody else today? Anybody else? Yeah. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Well, let's just say something together, okay? Say this with me as a prayer to the Lord and just saying from your own heart words that I'm saying, but you're going to fill it in with a lot of thinking of your own. Just say this. Jesus, today, I confess you as my Lord and my Savior. I believe that you came from heaven to earth. I believe that you lived for, for us. I believe that you died for us. I believe that you rose again for us from the dead. And that you live for me today. Today I confess all my sin of the past. I believe through that confession... You will forgive my sin. You will make me new. And so I thank you now, as I have confessed my sin, that I am a new creation. I'm a new person. I've been born again because of what you did for me, dying for me, and rising again for me. So I confess you today as my Lord as my Savior, as my King, as my God. I will live for you. I need your help, the power of your Holy Spirit working in me to help me to overcome. So today, I'm yielding myself to your Spirit to come work with me and in me, that I may serve you in a way that would please my God, Jesus Christ. 
I thank you, Lord, for your love and for saving me today. In the name of Jesus Christ, my Lord, amen, amen, amen. So do you believe that, my friend? Today, did you do that and did you say those things? Did you confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior today? Going to live in your heart and life? Yeah? Hey, give our brother a big hand. Would you do that? Yeah. Well, let's give a hand to Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, that you still save. Thank you, Lord, for redeeming us. Redeem is just mean to bought with a price. And Jesus bought us with the price of his own blood. Amen? Hey, we're going to receive communion. And you, my brother, man of God, uh, you get to take uh, communion along with us. Um, because you've given Jesus Christ your, your heart. So, uh, honey, help me out here. Well, first thing we can talk about is healing, because healing's in the atonement. I don't know, my wife's knee tightened up on her all of a sudden, and so, you know, needs to be made well. Jesus did that. His body was torn apart for us. Anybody else need a uh, communion? Everybody have one? Okay. Um, the elements there? We have these. This in our hands. You've got one there? Good. All right. I know, Eric, your leg has been bothering you. How's it doing now? We prayed a minute ago. Still hurts? Come on, stand up. Stand up. Hurts to stand up. Stand up. Be free. In the name of Jesus, be made free. Honey, stand up. Anybody else have knees that are hurting? Legs in pain. Yeah. And if it hurts to walk, then walk. And be healed as you walk. Okay? Be healed as you walk. Just walk around right, right where you are. You walk around in circles. That's okay. Just like the and Jericho come tumbling down. Okay? Yeah. In, J in Jesus' name, believe right now. Believe right now. Jesus, thank you. Thank you for the miracles that you're doing. Whatever else you need. If others have needs this morning, physical needs, just lift that bread to the Lord. Lift that bread to the Lord and be healed in Jesus' name. Be healed in Jesus' name. You know the people that are dealing with heart issues, that are dealing with blood pressure issues, that are dealing with cancer, that are dealing with signs of cancer, that are dealing with different kinds of, 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 of tumors, of hurts, of pains, of different kinds of anguish going on in their lives, different people going on, uh, dealing with their eye issues. Jesus, thank you today for healing, we pray, in Jesus' name. You are the Lord of all. You are the Lord of all. You are the gift to us. You gave us yourself so that we could ma be made whole and we could be made right in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Healing is in the atonement. You died that we might be made well. Jesus, thank you for your healing right now. Thank you for your healing right now all over this place, Jesus, touching people and making them well in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Lord, you, you gave us yourself as a gift for our healing. So we thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you're doing that right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Go ahead and move around, knees, whatever was hurting you, whatever was bothering you. Who's got a testimony of something God just did for you? Anybody got a testimony of what God just did for you? Doesn't hurt now? My wife says it doesn't hurt now. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Eric, how's that leg doing? Come walk to me. In the name of Jesus. Take away all that pain right now, Jesus, on this little short walk. In the name of Jesus, leave that body. Pain, leave that body in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Go ahead, walk back again. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we're believing, Lord God. Hallelujah. 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 Well, we may not be seeing it right now, but we're believing that God is healing that, that body, making that lake whole. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I believe we have, we've received what we've asked for in the name of Jesus. Uh-huh. 
Okay, so that pain has left you. Okay, well, in the name of Jesus, I know you've taken some meds, but that's okay. We're believing that God is, has healed you and that that body has been made well in Jesus' name. Go ahead and lift those legs, those feet, bend them up, whatever, the knees, in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for healing Sean this morning. Your faith has made you whole, Jesus said to the, to the one who was in need. He says, your faith has made you whole. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said it to the lady who touched the hem of his garment. Your faith has made you whole. Amen. And others, your faith has made you whole. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Any other testimonies here this morning of what God just did for you? Anybody else? Go ahead. Lord, we're believing for all of these. Your faith has made you whole. Be it done unto you. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we lift this bread to you, believing, God, what you did for us on the cross and what you continually do for us, that we can call upon your name at any time. You are here for us. Our daily needs. Give us this day our daily bread. Lord, that's what you told us to pray. So Jesus, this daily bread, our sustenance, all the things that we have need of in this life, here on this earth, you promised to take care of us and give us the things we need. So Lord, today, as you shared this with them in the, in the room before you were going to be crucified at the Last Supper, Lord, you gave them an emblem of bread. And bread was a symbol of life. And Jesus, you are the bread of life. And we receive of that today. We receive of you today the bread of life by receiving of this symbol of bread today. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's eat together. Therefore, the redeemed of the Lord shall return and come with singing into Zion. And everlasting joy will be upon their heads. You know what? This cup, this juice, the fruit of the vine, is a symbol of what Jesus did upon the cross for dying for us. Giving up his life for us. The life is in the blood. And he gave his life for us. Let's walk in the newness of that, just not taking it by routine, but realizing that we are alive in Christ because of what he did for us, and our name is written down in glory because of what he did for us. Our names are in the book of life because we have received of the promise of the blood of the Lamb. Thank you, Lord, that as we lift this cup to you, that you have redeemed us. You bought us with the price of your own blood that we might be made the children of God. That we may walk with you forever and ever and one day be in your kingdom. Thank you, Lord. Lord, our hearts are joyful over what you have done for us. Lord, what a sad day that was as a man. But Lord, for us to look back and say, God, thank you. Lord, I know that you are thrilled because of what you did, the finished work of the cross, so that we could become part of your family. So, Lord, we thank you for that. We ask that you continually grace us with your presence and the power of your Holy Spirit so that others may come to know you. We receive of this cup that signifies what you did upon the cross by shedding your blood for us that we might be made whole, that we might be set free from sin as we ask you for forgiveness. So thank you today, Lord, that you've forgiven us, you've set us free, and we get to walk with you day by day. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's receive today. Hallelujah. Amen. Can we stand together? Richard's going to lead and sing us out with a song today. Amen. Hallelujah. 
Thank you, Jesus. The weapon may be formed, but it won't prosper. When the darkness falls, it won't prevail. The God I serve knows only how to triumph. My God will never fail. My God will never fail. Come on. I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. There's power in the mighty name of Jesus. Every war he wages, he will win. I'm not backing down from any giant. I know how this story ends. If anyone needs prayer, you can just come on down and we'll be glad to pray for you. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory for the battle belongs to you Lord I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory for the battle belongs to you Lord praise you Jesus hallelujah You take. You take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. And you turn it for good. You take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. And you turn it for good. Take what the enemy meant for evil and to turn it for good and to turn it for good. You take what the enemy meant for evil and to turn it for good and to turn it for good. You take what the enemy meant for evil. And you turn it for good, and you turn it for good. You take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good, and you turn it for good. I'm gonna see a victory, I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, to you, Lord, yeah, I'm gonna see a victory, I'm gonna see a victory, for the battle belongs to you, Lord. You think what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good, and you 
turn it for good. You take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. And you turn it for good. Come on, lift up praise to the Lord. Hallelujah. That's a promise to you. That's a promise to you. Hallelujah. We receive of your promise today, Lord. We receive of your promises, oh God. Blessing and honor to you, oh King of kings and Lord of lords. Thank you, Lord. We bless your holy name, Lord. We bless your holy name. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, your people have assembled themselves together to praise, to worship, to learn, to serve. And now we get to go out these doors. We get to go tell the world. Share with them the good news of Jesus Christ. So thank you, Lord, for the empowerment of your spirit that we get to do that. Your grace, your blessing, your peace, your prosperity be upon each and every one. And Lord, may we be faithful to the word we have declared today to do all that you have told us to do, just like Joshua was told. God, may we do it. May we do it. And it isn't by our doing, it's by having faith in you our faith in you, our courage to do what you've told us to do will bring prosperity, health, and strength, and God set us free to do the things of the kingdom. We give you praise and thanks today in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Give God praise. Come on, somebody clap unto the Lord. Amen. Amen. God bless you.